Welcome back to another bookstore vlog. I cannot believe that I'm filming one so soon. I literally filmed one like two weeks ago. But I actually read the five books that I picked up. Well, I read all but one, which I'll probably start tonight. There are a few books that I want to pick up and I really, really hope that they're in stock. I'm not even going to check beforehand. I'm just going to go in there, manifest them, and hopefully they're there for me to buy. I actually have a lot to do today, but I'm putting my to-do list on pause for now and going to the bookstore instead because I want to stock up on some books to read. And yeah, I'm really excited. I'd rather go to the bookstore today than actually tackle my to-do list. I know that you guys all these types of videos i love filming them so why not the past few weeks it's been like gloomy and a little cold in florida but last week and this week the weather has been perfection so i don't want to stay inside i actually want to go enjoy it a little bit so that's what we're going to do and i'm going to bring you guys along with me so let's go buy some books does anyone else feel super guilty leaving their house <laughs> this little one has been sleeping all day and the minute I put on my shoes to leave, she comes out. I don't wanna leave you. I'm so cute. For once, I actually remembered to bring a reusable bag with me. I always forget, but today I actually remembered, so I'm super excited. I 
after you leave. I'm showing up on your phone. I'm back from Barnes & Noble. Remind me to never go during rush hour. Getting back home was absolute chaos, but I did pick up some new reads, so we're going to do a quick little book haul. Let me start off with the books that I'm probably the most excited about. So during my last bookstore vlog, I picked up The Deal by L. Kennedy, and I fell in love with that book. I think it's one of my favorite books of all time. I just love how cute it is. It has its funny moments. It's deep moments and I love the writing. I love the characters. So I picked up the next two books in the Off Campus series and the first one is The Mistake by L. Kennedy. This is a summary of the book. He's a player in more ways than one. College junior John Logan can get any girl he wants. For this hockey star, life is a parade of parties and hookups, but behind his killer grins and easygoing charm, he hides growing despair about the dead-end road he'll be forced to walk after graduation. A sexy encounter with freshman Grace Ivers is just the distraction he needs, but when a thoughtless mistake pushes her away, Logan plans to spend his final year proving to her that he's worth a second chance. I am so excited to read this. Okay, now he's going to need to up his game. After a less than stellar freshman year, Grace is back at Briar University, older, wiser, and so over the arrogant hockey player she nearly handed her V-card to. She's not a charity case, and she's not the quiet butterfly she was when they first hooked up. If Logan expects her to roll over and bag like all his other puck bunnies, he can think again. He wants her back, he'll have to work for it. This time around she'll be the one in the driver's seat and she plans on driving him wild. Mm. I'm so excited to read this. I think I've said that like 500 times already, but the actually I have the book right here. This is the first book in the Off Campus series and this is the one that I fell in love with. Wait for my monthly book recap because I can't wait to tell you guys more about this book. It's so good. If you haven't read it, definitely read it, especially if you're into romance. I'm not really into romance. At least I wasn't until I read this book and now I'm hooked, obviously, with the books that I picked up today. I like that in the off-campus series, the friend group remains the same, but the focus just changes depending on the book. The next one I picked up is called The Score. This is the third book in the off-campus series, and this is the summary. He knows how to score on and off the ice. Allie Hayes is in crisis mode. With graduation looming, she still doesn't have the first clue about what she's going to do after college. To make matters worse, she's nursing a broken heart thanks to the end of her long-time relationship. Wild rebound sex is definitely not the solution to her problems, but gorgeous hockey star Dean Laurentis is impossible to resist. Just once though, because even if her future is uncertain, it sure as heck would include the king of what night stands. It'll take more than flashy moves to win her over. Dean always gets what he wants. Girls, grades, girls, recognition, girls. He's a ladies man, all right, and he's yet to meet a woman who's immune to his charms. Until Allie. For one night, the feisty blonde rocked his entire world and now she wants to be friends? No. It's not over until he says it's over. Dean is in full on pursuit, but when life rocking changes strike, he starts to wonder if maybe it's time to stop focusing on scoring and shoot for love. I am so excited to read this book because I met Dean in The Deal, just briefly. He seems like he's such a player and only cares about having one night nice stands. I can't wait to read his love story and see how much he grows as a person. These two books are probably going to be the first ones that I read, but like, I love having a series. Ugh. I need to get a bookshelf. I don't have a bookshelf and I need to buy one because I have nowhere to put my books. <laughs> So the next book that I picked up is Verity by Colleen Hoover. Some of you guys recommended this book to me and I actually saw it during my second Barnes & Noble trip a few weeks ago and it sounds very promising. It sounds like it's a thriller. It is, right? It's a thriller, not a romantic novel. I've heard it's kind of scary, so I don't know. Lowen Ashley is a struggling writer on the brink of financial ruin when she accepts a job offer of a lifetime. Jeremy Crawford, husband of best 
best-selling author Verity Crawford has hired Loan to complete the remaining books in a successful series his injured wife is unable to finish. Loan arrives at the Crawford home ready to sort through years of Verity's notes and outlines, hoping to find enough material to get her started. What Loan doesn't expect to uncover in the chaotic office is an unfinished autobiography Verity never intended for anyone to read. Page after page of bone-chilling omissions, including Verity's recollection of the night her family was forever altered. Loan decides to keep the manuscript hidden from Jeremy, knowing its contents could devastate the already grieving father. But as Loan's feelings for Jeremy begin to intensify, she recognizes all the ways she could benefit if he were to read his wife's words. After all, no matter how devoted Jeremy is to his injured wife, a truth this horrifying would make it impossible for him to continue loving her. So I guess it's a romantic thriller. I'm actually very curious to see how this book plays out. I just finished, I think literally like yesterday, I finished It Ends With Us and that book broke my heart. Like Colleen Hoover better not break my heart with this book because I can't take it. It Ends With Us was so sad. It was devastating. I know this is a romantic thriller so of course I'm going to experience different emotions while I read this book. By the time I finish this book my heart better still be intact because it was not intact with It Ends With Us. Really excited to read this. Colleen Hoover is a phenomenal author and I saw so many of her books in the Barnes & Noble that I went to, but I didn't know where to start. And some of you guys recommended this book, so I went with it. Let me know in the comments below which Colleen Hoover book you think I should read after I finish Verity. The next book that I picked up is The Love Hypothesis by Allie Hazelwood. And I actually have been eyeing this book for such a long time. I saw it in the book talk section of Barnes & Noble, so I guess it went viral on TikTok. I'm really curious to see how this plays out. I think it will be like a cute little romantic comedy type of book. As a third year PhD candidate, Olive Smith doesn't belong in lasting romantic relationships, but her best friend does, and that's what got her into this situation. Convincing Anne that... Am I pronouncing that right? Yeah. <laughs> Convincing Anne that Olive is dating and well on her way to a happily ever after was always going to take more than hand wavy Jedi mind tricks. Scientists require proof. So like any self-respecting biologist, of course, Olive panics and kisses the first man she sees. That sentence alone intrigued me enough to pick up the book and buy it because that is hilarious. I can just picture that happening in my mind. but. That man is none other than Adam Carlson, a young hotshot professor and well-known ass. Which is why Olive is positively floored when Stanford's reigning lab triant agrees to keep her charade a secret and be her fake boyfriend. And when a big science conference goes haywire, putting Olive's career on the Bunsen burner, Adam surprises her again with his unyielding support and even more unyielding six-pack abs. Suddenly, their little experiment feels dangerously close to combustion. I love the scientific references. So cute. And Olive discovers that the only thing more complicated than a hypothesis on love is putting her own heart under the microscope. This sounds like it's going to be such a fun read. The cover is absolutely adorable. I'm excited about this one as well. Honestly, I'm excited about all the books that I picked up. <laughs> And then this one was really intriguing to me. It's called Seven Dirty Secrets by Natalie Richards. The cover alone made me want to pick it up. I know you shouldn't judge a book by its cover, but I do that all the time. <laughs> the cover really called to me, but this is the summary of the book. On her 18th birthday, Cleo receives a mysterious invitation to a scavenger hunt. She's sure her best friend Hope or her brother Connor is behind it, but no one confesses. And as Cleo and Hope embark on the hunt, the seemingly random location and clues began to feel familiar. In fact, every clue seems to be about Cleo's dead boyfriend, Declan, who drowned on a group rafting trip exactly one year ago, a bracelet she bought him, a song he loved, a photo of the rafting group taken just before Declan drowned, and then the phone calls start, Declan's voice taunting Cleo with a cryptic question. You ready? As the clock on the scavenger hunt ticks down, it becomes clear that someone knows what really happened to Declan, and that person will stop at night nothing to make sure Cleo and her friends pay. Can they solve the hunt before someone else winds up dead? This sounds like such a good read. I feel like it's going to have me at the edge of my seats. 
So apparently she's a New York Times bestselling author of the five strangers, five total strangers. So maybe if I like this one, I will pick up her bestselling novel. Very excited to read all of these books. And if you guys have any recommendations of any books that I should pick up during my next bookstore vlog, definitely let me know in the comments below. I feel like I'm really lucky because the Barnes & Noble near me has so many good options. I feel like whenever I go in there and I'm looking for a book, they always have it. At least these last couple times that I went, I know that sometimes people are like, Barnes & Noble can be a hit or miss if they're looking for a particular book. But so far, I've been pretty lucky and I've been finding all of the books that I wanted, which honestly makes me so happy. But yeah, that's pretty much it for today's video. I really hope you guys enjoyed watching. If you did, don't forget to give it a big thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe. I would love to have you a part of my little community here on YouTube. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye, guys.